Welcome to this new series where we're going to talk about Firebase functions. It's going to be about how we can take responsibility from a front end and move it to the back end inside an application. So right now I've built this application right here. You can go and check out the series if you want to, Advanced Web Apps 2019. That's where I've gone and built a small setup looking something like this where we can go in and create some products. It's very simple. You can go and add new products and you can just go in and give it a name here, um, Smurf and you can pick a, uh, select the picture right here, and then you can go in and crop that picture before you actually upload it. Again, so I'll crop this and select just the hair right here. There we go, and I'll say add, and now it'll upload the picture, and it likes to redirect me back and show me the picture right here. So this is the solution. Here's the Smurf I just built. This is the solution, but the problem is right now that Angular takes almost all the responsibility on how to create this product right here, on Firebase. So right now Angular calls Firebase two, three times to kind of do this. Now we can get around that, we can change that by using Firebase functions and saying I want to send more data in a single request and then I want Firebase functions to take care of everything when creating such a product right here. I don't want to do all the work, I'll let Firebase do it for me. So we'll try and move some of the logic on creating a new product from the Angular part, which is the front end, to the backend, which is Firebase. So let's try and get an overview about what actually happens when I create a new product right here. What actually goes on when I do a save right here? I select the image, I do all of this, but what actually happens when I press the add button right here? Well, right now, Angular has the full responsibility of creating this. So what Angular actually does is all these steps. First, Angular goes and sends the metadata for the file. Now that goes to the database, creates Inside Firestore, it creates an ID and the actual metadata like file name, file size, stuff like that. It sends a response back, I'm done to Angular. So now we have the metadata for the file. Now step two is it now sends the actual file, you know, the physical file, like the, the image I just picked right here, this file that I just clipped. It's going to send that file all the way to Firebase again and save it inside Fire Storage. Now when that is done and that is being saved, it's done saving now, it'll send a response back again saying, I've now saved your file. Now the third step that Angular has to do on its own right now is sending a product metadata. Pretty much meaning that now we can send the information about the product. And right now the information is very, very simple because it's just a name and it's actually also a reference to this picture. So that information, we can now send that as the final step to Firebase and Firebase will say, wee, happy days. I'll just save that metadata inside the Firestore and request a response back that I'm done. Perfect. But that was kind of three steps to get something done that Angular has to know about, right? Angular has to work with all these three steps. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to use something called Firebase functions to take Angular out of the way right here and say, we don't have to do all of this. In the future, what we'll do is we'll send some more information in a single request. So instead of having this image, what will happen is actually we're going to remove all of these requests right here and hopefully end up just sending product with metadata. With image and meta like this, right? So that's kind of the goal. We'll send one single request to this area right here and hopefully all of these can go away. Now the power is now we can let the backend take care of all of this for us. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And that pretty much means that now we have the possibility of optimizing our backend. We have the possibility of setting up more servers when we need to. We have a lot of different options that kind of pop up by changing this. And we also have a way to make in my mind, somewhat better security here because it's easier now to maintain. We have a way to kind of say, we don't need to kind of do 50 pipes like we're doing right now with observables to make this work. We get a lot of new options. We can use this now, not only from an Angular app, you could easily now go in and use the exact same logic from a, a mobile app. It could be anything, iOS, Android, whatever you want. A mobile app could now do the same request with product image and again, we didn't have to do three different requests right here to get it solved. Now it will only be one request and Firebase would take care of it for us. So I know that was a bit long introduction, but that's the goal. And next lesson, we'll dive into the code and just see these things happening in code. That's it. Have fun.